this is a good reference um, scripture, everyone. Um, and good morning, by the way. Um, <clears throat> I just want to share this with you. Yeah, and we did get some snow, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> I want to share this with you. Um, this is the same John, the Apostle John, that wrote uh, the Gospel John. This is one of his epistles. And um, I'm sure that everyone would agree that John knows what he means. All right? Now, in the Gospel John, in the first chapter of the Gospel John, it has been mistaken that John was talking about um, a such thing as a God the Son who came to his own. And that it's not the father that came. Or um, many Trinitarians have mistaken <clears throat> that God, a, a such thing as God the Son came down from heaven. And that's who came in the flesh to his own. And that it wasn't the father. It was somebody else called God the Son who is also God or equal to the Father, and that's who they believe came in the flesh. And they believe that by John's, by misunderstanding John's writings in the Gospel John, where it says he came to his own and his own did not receive him, and they knew him not, knew him not they think that that is God the son that they knew not which there's no such thing as God the son but they believe in one <clears throat> um, that is also God and not only a father is God now <clears throat> the reason why they believe that is because they mistakenly misinterpret the word, um, the word that was with God. And they somehow apply the title God to God the Son to the word. And <clears throat> John does not teach that. He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He doesn't say that the word was another God or somebody else who is God or he doesn't say son nowhere but they misinterpret that and infer the word son onto it when John never said that that, that the word was a son of anybody he just says that the word that was with God was God in other words you can say it this way the word that was with him is him <clears throat> because when God speaks, his speech is part of himself. And his speech is what he created everything with. God said, let there be, and it was so. There was no other person that collaborated with him in order to make it happen. He just spoke it, and that was it. So that's the word creating. It's not another person in the Godhead that God was working with in order to create anything God created all things by himself with no assistance of another even all the host of heaven he created them too by himself and nobody else was there so, so God didn't have any assistance in creating nothing he created all things alone now <clears throat> To prove to you that it was the father that came in the flesh keep in mind this is the same John that wrote the gospel John look what he says in um, 1st John uh, chapter 3 verse 1 through 2 see what manner of love the father has bestowed on us talking about the father right so you see, I'm not making this up. 
John is talking about the Father. See what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us? That we shall be called children of God? Or sons of God? And then it says, speaking of the Father, that <clears throat> the world receiveth us not because it knew him not, right? I'm paraphrasing. So the one that they knew not is the Father. So now that you know that John is talking about it's the Father that they knew not, then you can go back to the Gospel of John and understand that everything there that the same John said, he's referring to the Father. So it's the Father that came to his own. And his own received him not. And his own knew him not. not you see that? <clears throat> this scripture parallels with the gospel, John. And you clearly see that John literally said it's the father. See what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. Who bestowed the love? The Father did. And who is it that he says the world knew not? The Father. So it's it's the Father that the world knew not. Not God the Son, not a such thing. So the word that was God is that God. That proves that the Word is the Father, not a God the Son. <laughs> because you have to admit, he says that the Father is the one that bestowed the love. See what manner of love that the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. And then he says, the world knew not the Father. Talking about the Father. Knew him not. So that's what John, that's who John was referring to when he said the world knew him not. With that understanding that he was talking about the Father, now you can go back to the Gospel of John in chapter 1 and read it and understand it. That when it said he came to his own and his own received him not, the one that came is the Father. <laughs> so it's the Father that came to his own by coming in the flesh. So it was the Father that took on flesh, not a such thing as God the Son. So the word that took on flesh is actually the spirit of the Father. That's not a son. The son is what the word was in. Or what him who is God the Father was in. That's the son. That's the flesh. But, <clears throat> but the God that came to his own, and his own received him not, and knew him not, is referring to the Father. That's very clear. This is the same John that wrote the Gospel John. He also wrote the Epistles. You see? This is the same John that wrote the book of, of in Revelation. Same John. And that same John calls God and the Lamb him in uh, uh, Revelation 22 and 3. He sees the Father and the Son as one person. <laughs> Do you see? John did not see another one. So if you were to say that John said, if, if John was standing right there with you, and you were to say to John that he was talking about God the Son came down from heaven and took on flesh, 
and came to his own, and his own received him not and knew him not, referring to a such thing as God the Son, John would correct you, and he, he, he could even use scripture to correct you, because I'm, I'm reading it to you right now. He was talking about the Father, and he would say, no, that's not, that's not what I was talking about. The Father came to his own. <laughs> the world knew not the Father. You see? Now, now watch this. It goes even further and says in verse 2 that <clears throat> we will be, man, I'm paraphrasing because I'm not reading it. I'm just quoting. In verse 2 <clears throat> of the epistle of John, John 1, 3, and verse 2, you will find that it says that, speaking of the Father, still speaking of the same Father that he was talking about in verse 1. He's still speaking about the Father, and he says that when he comes, when he comes back, we should be made like him. But watch this. We shall see him as he is. So the one that's coming back is the father that's coming back. But we're going, we're going to see him as he is. How is he then? He's in a body. And that body is called the son of God. So we're going to see the father appear in a glorified body, which is called the Son of God. And that glorified body is the same body that we're going to have and will be made like his body, like him in the body. It's not that we're going to be made into God, but we're going to be made like him according to how he appears in the flesh or in the body of the glorified body, which is the Son of God. So the Son of God is God's body. That's clear. The one that's going to appear, John says it's the Father. But the way that the Father appears is in his body, which is the Son. <laughs> so the Son is not another person. The Son is the body of the Father, and that's how the Father appears. He is the image of the invisible God. You see? Different than how Adam was created in God's image and likeness. No, Adam was created in God's image and likeness. But Adam wasn't the image of the Father. He's created in the image and likeness of the image. Image and likeness. So they share in common that image. But the image that Adam was wasn't, his, wasn't the Father's own. The difference with Jesus is he's the Father's own image. <laughs> his body is the Father's own body. Adam's body wasn't the Father's own. It was just a body that was created in the image and likeness of, of, that reflected um, the humanoid look which God also has in spirit form. But the Son of God is actually God's own body and God's own image. That's why he can show up as the Son and that is identified to be him. Because the body and the spirit are one. <laughs> Do you see? And it's God that will judge through the through the body or through the Son. Do you see it? <clears throat> so that that is very plain right there. That John was referring to the Father as the one they knew not. So now that you understand that the Father is who John was talking about, is the one that the world knew not, 
Now you can go back to the Gospel John and read chapter 1 all over again with the understanding that John was talking about the Father. And again, this is not somebody else that's saying that John said that. This is John himself saying what he said, and he's explaining it. He's telling you who he was talking about right here. And he literally says, the Father, see what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God or sons of God. The Father bestowed that love. And the world knew not him. Knew not the Father. So it's the Father that came to his own. That makes sense because <clears throat> um, it says that he was in the world and the world was made by him. It makes sense that the Father created the world and that's the one who was in the world he created. That's who came in the flesh. There was no other God with God. <laughs> there was no other God person with God. This this is so clear. This even clarifies that the word that was God is that God. <laughs> because it's the word that came to that 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 came became flesh, right? The word was made flesh, right? And uh Trinitarians have that word mistakenly interpreted as God the Son, like a spirit son that was up there in heaven with the Father, and that the Father sent a spirit son um, down here to take on flesh for him, and that a spirit son is actually the one that redeemed us. So, the, so Trinitarian world has a spirit son. They have the word misinterpreted as a spirit son, some of them even say eternally begotten, which really don't make sense. Because begotten means began. <laughs> begotten means you started. <laughs> you can't be eternally started. If you're eternal, you don't start. <laughs> So they misinterpret the word, which was God, as another God. Another God person. And they add all this stuff to it, and they say, God the Son. Now, we would agree the word is Jesus. But the problem is, when, when you say Jesus, they think that means Son only. So when you say, yeah, the word was Jesus... They think that you're saying, son of God. But what you got to understand, Jesus wasn't always the son of God. <laughs> Jesus, before he was the son of God, existed as a spirit, and that spirit was the father. <laughs> the God. <laughs> That's why he's the everlasting father, according to Isaiah. He's the everlasting Father, the mighty God. That's nobody's son. That's him in spirit. That's before he was made the son. He didn't become the son until the incarnation. That's why you don't see a relationship between a son and a father until that happens. And all you hear about, about a son is you hear about one being prophesied to come. But you don't hear anything about a son already there. <laughs> Neither do you ever hear a son say something to the father in the Old Testament. Neither do you hear a father say anything to a son in the Old Testament other than Israel. Israel was his son. That's who God called his son back then, a nation.
But there was no no begotten son who was God with God. That doesn't even make sense when God said, there's no God with me. And that I am God and there's none besides me. So you can't have another one. <laughs> but I like this because when John says that the Father is the one they knew not, then that makes sense because now we know that when it said that the world was made by him, that's the him. It's talking about the Father that was in the world and he made it. <laughs> he was in the world and the world was made by him. Not a son was in the world and the world was made by a son. You see, you must have understanding. The only thing that God made by the Son was the new kingdom, which is the spiritual kingdom, the new creation, because God came in the flesh as the Son and did the work as the Son, and as the Son created a new creation in Christ Jesus. So the new creation God made by the Son. But the, 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 the book of Genesis, the, the actual earth, that was not made by no son. The father made that. And the Bible said that he gave him uh, authority over the work of his hands. <laughs> now, if the son is the one that made the world, then how could the father give the son authority over the work of his hands? It would be his own hands that did it, would it not? See the problem? There was no son back in the Old Testament of God. The son's not eternal. The son was only created because God needed to come in the flesh to redeem us. <laughs> the same thing that Mary's the mother over, that's the same thing that God's the father over. That's the flesh. And flesh was not eternal. So no, there was no son of God that pre-existed. Jesus pre-existed as God the Father. He made the son. <laughs> and gave the son his name because that's part of himself. It's a human function of the same one. Do you see? <laughs> The Son of God was under God. The Son of God served God. <laughs> the Son of God was instructed by God and taught by God and anointed by God. <laughs> so the Son of God is not God. The Son of God is a humanity of that God. Yes, it's part of himself, but it's not a divine part. As in another God who's with God. Otherwise, he would need the Father's help. The Father's Spirit would not indwell him if he's God all by himself. <laughs> or if he's another one who is God, or another one who's equal to God, he would need the Father's Spirit to anoint him. He needed the Father to anoint him. <laughs> and he was taught by the Father. God can't be taught by nobody. <laughs> nobody teaches God. <laughs> and God cannot lose his divinity to become a man. If that was the case, then that would mean that one of the God persons died while two of the God persons lived. And for a moment, we had two-thirds of a God. <laughs> while another one went black <laughs> for three days. Could that really happen to God who changes not? 
No, God never died. His flesh died. His humanity died. The Son died. But the Spirit always lives, and the Spirit never dies. So anybody that tells you God died knows nothing about what they're talking about because God is a spirit who can't die. <laughs> Son of God died, which is God's body. Yes, it's an extension of himself, but it's a, hum a human extension of himself that he created, susceptible to death. In order to redeem us, and in order to have the sacrifice, and in order to make the perfect sacrifice, he created his son in a way that he could die. So the son is not divine. The son is not eternal. The son is not God. The son was a man that was able to die. <laughs> and he did die, and it was the spirit that raised the son, not a son that raised the son. It was the father that raised the son because only the father's God. <laughs> so no, there's no Trinity. No, there's no God the Son. No, all of that's a lie. The only God there is is the father, and that's who came in the flesh. Again, he came to his own. Watch this. Again, the world knew him not. See what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us? That we should be called sons of God? Who did that? The Father. Look at what I have posted there. Read it. See what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. Now, who does he say that they knew not? Does it say they knew not God the Son? They knew not the second person of the Trinity? Does it say that? Or were you taught that lie? That there's another one? <laughs> with the one. See, we as oneness, we don't believe there's another one with the one. <laughs> And he was in the world. 
How? In the flesh. God in the flesh. The Father in the flesh was in the world, and he's the one that made it. <laughs> and the Father is the one that came in the flesh to his own, and his own received him not and knew him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be called sons of God. The Father did that, not a God the Son. No, the Father's Spirit did that. So the Father put his own spirit in flesh. He didn't send somebody else to redeem us. God said there's no other redeemer except himself. He didn't send somebody else to save us. God said, besides me, there's no savior. <laughs> and according to Acts 4 and 12, <laughs> there's no other name given to man that we can be saved by other than Jesus. <laughs> And and not only no other name, it also said, neither is there salvation in any other. <laughs> so if Jesus is not the Father, and there's no salvation in any other, but yet the Father said, he's the only Savior, and there's none besides him, then that would make the Father a liar, would it not? Because if Jesus is somebody else, and the Father is somebody else, but yet there's no salvation in anybody other than Jesus, according to Acts 4 and 12. <laughs> then Jesus has to be the Father. There's no way around that. Otherwise, there would be salvation in one more. <laughs> Because the Father's the Savior and Jesus is the Savior. And we don't have two Saviors. <laughs> so all we have, and the only thing that could make sense, <laughs> is that the one true God, the Father, is Jesus. Jesus is the one true God, the Father, who came in the flesh as the Son, and redeemed us, and saved us, working in his body. And that's the reason why when it says he's coming back in verse 2, if you read what I posted in verse 2, it says that the Father's the one that's coming back. But how is he coming back? He's coming back, and, and we shall see him as he is. Well, how is the Father right now? How does he look right now? Well, the Father is indwelling a body, <laughs> a glorified body. That body is what he called his son. <laughs> That's what's on the throne. <laughs> and there's only one body up there, <laughs> not three. <laughs> and there's only one throne of God, and there's only one God on that throne, not three. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit proceeds from that one. He's the one that sends it. <laughs> He's the one that baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire, not somebody else. <laughs> when you pray and two or three of you are gathered in his name, he's in the midst, not somebody else. <laughs> Jesus said, there I am in the midst, not some third person in a trinity. So the Holy Spirit's him. <laughs> Jesus breathed, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Oh, but the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father. Why is it proceeding from you, Jesus? Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the Father. <laughs> John fourteen twenty six. Compare John fourteen twenty six with John fifteen twenty six. And you'll see that the Father will sit in the Holy Ghost. You will also see that Jesus will sit in the Holy Ghost. We don't have two that sit in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Jesus is the Father, and the Holy Ghost is his Spirit. And that's him pouring out of his Spirit, and he's the only God. <laughs> You're going to understand that when he comes back. Unless you're listening to 
what I'm saying now. <laughs> that God will come back in the flesh with his glorified body. And the sun is the image of that invisible God. That's how you see God. Otherwise, God's invisible and you can't see him. <laughs> but in his body, which is the sun that he made and took on, that is how you see God. That's the visibility of the God. <laughs> and the spirit that's in the visibility of the God is that one God, the Father. And the one that's controlling the body is that one spirit that's controlling the body, the Father. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see? He's not working partnership with nobody as God. He is God by himself. <laughs> yes, Trinity's a lie from the devil. Yes. So there you have it, y'all. <clears throat> if you believe something else, John disagrees with you. If you believe that when he said the word was God, that he was talking about God the Son or some other one, <clears throat> once again, read right here what I just posted, that John's talking about the Father is who the world knew not, and then go back and read John chapter 1 all over again, lick up all your lies, and understand that John was talking about the Father the whole time. And that the word is the father <laughs> that came to his own and his own knew him not. And he was in the world and made it. <laughs> and when he says the word was God, that's the God he's talking about. The father. God the father. So the father's word was with himself. Just like my word is with myself. And when I speak my word, my word is sent. <laughs> Likewise, the Father sends his word. You don't believe me? Read Isaiah uh, 55 and 11. <clears throat> my word should not return to me void, but it shall, it, 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 not he, not a second person in the Godhead, no, it shall accomplish the thing for which I send it, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I send it. <laughs> the Father's word is an it that comes from the he, and there's only one he <laughs> who is God. And the he sends the it from the he. <laughs> And the it accomplishes what the he sends it to do. And the it shall not return to the he void, but the it shall accomplish what the he sends the it to do. <laughs> so when God sends the word, God sends it. And the it is part of his spirit, and part of his spirit is the he. <laughs> That's why the word that was with God is God. Or the word that was with him is him. <laughs> Not them. <laughs> and that's why Jesus said, he that made him in the beginning made him, made them male and female. Not we. <laughs> because the son didn't create us. The son himself was created. By the Father. That which is conceived is of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Son of God is the Holy Ghost child. Read Matthew 1 and 18. He is literally called the child of the Holy Ghost. Read it. Matthew 1 and 18. He's the child of the Holy Ghost. The Son of God is the child of the Father. <laughs> he shall grow up before me 
as a tender plant. <laughs> Shall grow up before me as a tender plant. Not as already grown. Not has lived as long as me. Not has been here as long as I've been here. No, he shall grow up before me as a tender plant. <laughs> the Son of God was a baby that grew up. But God is nobody's baby. <laughs> God was in that baby. The Father was in that flesh. <laughs> now let me make it a little more clear. The Father was in his flesh. <laughs> Not somebody else's flesh. There's only one spirit in there. <laughs>
The father is a title of a person. Son is a title of a person. Holy Ghost is a title of the person. That's the title of his spirit. Those are titles of the one God. <laughs> Not persons of the one God. Titles. The Father has a name. The Son has a name. The Holy Spirit has a name. But it's not three names. <laughs> it's the name of one. Jesus. <laughs> and it's not three Jesuses. Because there's only one Savior. <laughs> and none besides the one. <laughs> That's why if you reject Jesus, you reject the Father. Yeah, that's the Father. <laughs> you see him as the Son. Because that's how he manifests himself. In the flesh. But if you reject him, who you're really rejecting is the one that's in that flesh, which is the Father. <laughs> that's the spirit of Jesus. Just like if you reject me as a man, you reject my spirit, too. You reject the man, Andre. You reject the spirit, Andre, as well. <laughs> because all of it is me. You either receive all of me or none of me. <laughs> because I am one. <laughs> my spirit and my body go together, and I am one. <laughs> the Father and the Son is the body of God. And the God, all in one. <laughs> that's why you can't have one without the other. And that's why you can't reject the one and not reject the other. You can't say, I'll take God, but I don't really want Jesus. God is Jesus. <laughs> all right, all right. Let me leave it right there, y'all. 